happy to share with you a couple of uh, updates about uh, our work in Europe around uh, European Open Science Cloud skills and training. And uh, it's a report from uh, the working group chaired by uh, Natalia Manola from Open Air and uh, Mansien Kadar from uh, European University Association. Uh, and I'm a rapporteur for this working group. Uh, it uh, covers uh, both digital skills, uh, which uh, includes an understanding of data, software and tools, and also European Open Science Cloud skills, uh, mainstreaming uh, open science practices, uh, allowing all types of actors interact with uh, European Open Science Cloud or EUSC ecosystem and also develop leadership uh, in uh, certain communities uh, for open and data intensive science uh, and uh, we focus on uh, facilitation coordination and alignment and, uh, Europe now is writing a document which is called uh, strategic research and innovation agenda and the uh, draft documents uh, went for consultations and uh, as you see on those slides, uh, skills and training uh, were mentioned as uh, highly relevant areas for any strategic research and innovation uh, developments in Europe. Uh, our working group was formed uh, in January this year, and um, it includes 42 members. Uh, some of them were nominated by uh, European Union member state and uh, associated countries. Uh, some representatives come from the European Commission, uh, and uh, we also have a lot of uh, representatives of uh, European Commission funded projects uh, that uh, support European Open Science Cloud uh, and have training uh, activities um, and we're focusing on uh, skills and training, competences, capabilities um, and uh, some principles and vision uh, that drive our work, uh, recognition of uh, digital skills and qualifications, uh, equitable and balanced digital research market, uh, cross-sector mobility and employability, and um, other areas are covered in this slide. We structure our work uh, in four task forces. Uh, so the first one is looking into EOSC minimal skill set, identifying in and prioritizing uh, open science and digital skills for USC. Then the second task force is looking into organizational models for competence centers and uh, the alignment on the, on the national and European level. Uh, we also have a task force uh, looking into uh, national strategies for digital skills and the role for EUSC. And uh, the last one is looking into specifications of uh, training catalogs. Um, and uh, I'm presenting you still work in progress. Uh, those task forces will release their reports uh, in the end of, October, of November, beginning of December this year. Uh, I'll start with the first one and uh, you can see the members uh, of minimal use skill set working group uh, and uh, it looks uh, into a set of skills uh, which are essential for USC and uh, which were identified by uh, other projects and initiatives uh, and as you can see there are many of them already And um, this task force uh, tried to summarize uh, actors, uh, their skills and training needs in uh, EOSC user 
ecosystem. And uh, the next step uh, is to map uh, existing skills and uh, competence frameworks uh, and then uh, identify and prioritize uh, open science and digital skill sets for EOSC uh, and also all EOSC actors. Uh, and um, these are some of the skills that uh, we addressed in a diagram, which I will show in a minute. So, so this diagram is uh, still work in progress. Uh, we had consultations and we received a lot of feedback and we are revising it. Uh, and, um, so you can see it lists uh, different actors uh, and uh, how they interact with uh, European uh, Open Science Cloud. Uh, that's a closer look. Uh, and, uh, it covers data professionals, researchers, uh, citizens, uh, use actors, policy makers, uh, and others. So, and we're looking into data skills, uh, open science skills, and also skills needed to run um, infrastructures, uh, services and tools for USC. Uh, and uh, just some examples of uh, actors uh, that we have, and uh, we're still revising uh, definitions, so bear with us if uh, something that you see on the slide uh, isn't what you would expect. Uh, so for example, if we take uh, a data steward, then um, your skills that this data steward would require would be deep understanding of fair principles, ability to use uh, your core services uh, for publishing data and preserving data, and uh, ability to practice open science principles and exchange services related to data. Another example is a researcher, and research is a main target for EOSC, uh, and uh, a researcher would need general knowledge of EOSC, including fair principles, and then uh, ability to use, uh, to use EOSC discipline-specific and uh, cross-discipline uh, services. Uh, policymaker is another actor that we have in our diagram, and uh, policymakers need reasonable knowledge of EOSC, with special focus on open science, privacy, security, fair principles, and then ability to use, use discipline-specific and um, generic services. Um, this diagram uh, will be part of uh, the report which is uh, in the making now, and um, this report will map uh, existing uh, competencies and skills, uh, describe different roles uh, in the context of different organizations and uh, how EOSC uh, might support those roles. And uh, this report is coming uh, mid-November. Another task force focuses on uh, options for organizational models and coordinate coordination of competence centers. And you can see members of the task force uh, on the slide. Uh, and uh, I'd like to stress that uh, we're not setting up an EOSC competence center. We're looking at uh, plurality, existing pl plurality on the national level, uh, institutional level, uh, research infrastructure level, level professional organizations level, uh, European level. And uh, we're also looking at uh, different aspects of digital skills, data, infrastructures, open science. Uh, and uh, we would like to support some kind of alignment of uh, those competence centers. So we, what we're doing now, we're running a series of um, interviews uh, with existing competence centers, uh, looking at uh, their organizational models, what works, what doesn't, and uh, what kind of advice we could provide for those who are starting uh, and what we already noticed, of course, is that uh, there is a lot of diversity in different institutions, in different countries, and diversity is an aspect that we, we have in Europe. Um, and uh, this is a definition of uh, a competence center, which we 
borrowed and adapted from um, Ferris Fair project uh, deliverable. And uh, when we're doing those interviews, we're looking at uh, positioning and training priorities of competence centers, uh, their skills and competencies focus, um, and we're using uh, a diagram which I mentioned earlier from our task force one. Uh, then we're also looking into governance, business models, and sustainability, and uh, coordination and alignment with um, other initiatives uh, in other institutions, countries, and um, across Europe. Our third task force is looking into EU skills and training in national strategies. And uh, you can see the task force members on this slide. Uh, and uh, uh, Europe has quite a complex landscape uh, when we talk about uh, digital skills. Uh, so we have all these different actors and uh, programs uh, that are going on um, now. And um, here we have to really look uh, in the wider context. Um, and uh, our goal is to provide an overview for national digital skills initiatives, uh, identify gaps and overlaps, uh, and then uh, provide some insights on how to best position your skills and training in uh, digital digital skills, national strategies, and agenda, and develop recommendations for policymakers. Uh, and it's a study which we commissioned to LDK consultants. Uh, and um, this study will be released uh, in the end of this year. Uh, it includes um, interviews uh, in nine countries. Uh, and uh, some um, initial uh, highlights from um, interviews that already took place. Uh, uh, current governance fragmentation and uh, diverse priorities in uh, different digital skills agenda. There is no integrated framework for on the national levels. Uh, And um, there are very diverse stakeholders. Uh, a lot of uh, ongoing training uh, activities. Uh, not so many um, certification frameworks. Uh, and uh, there is still a separation be between uh, digital skills discussions uh, on the national level uh, and uh, open access, open data, open science uh, policies uh, and priorities uh, and open science strategies and policies are mainly focusing on research and infrastructure, not so much in skills and um, fair data action plan alignment is still needed. So, so there will be more towards the end of the year. And our last uh, task force uh, is looking into training catalogs. Um, and uh, you can see the members listed here. And uh, uh, existing uh, training catalogs uh, and standards uh, were mapped. Uh, and we're doing this uh, in collaboration with uh, other initiatives, for example, uh, RDA Education and Training um, Interest Group, uh, regional uh, European uh, projects that have a task force on uh, training and skills, and they are building a common catalog for training resources. We also have discipline specific. Uh, EOSC projects building discipline specific training catalogs. Uh, we have two projects that are building uh, and managing uh, EOSC portal. We have projects like uh, Open Air and uh, Community of Practice of Training Coordinators that also look in inter interoperability and alignment, uh, different resources. Uh, and the um, scope of um, this study. Uh, will be based on uh, use cases uh, 
for each of their actors defined in the task force one. And it will include uh, vision, motivation, and ambition, ambition for foreseen use training catalog of catalogs, sir. Uh, and will address uh, users, interoperations between different catalogs, sir, different quality aspects, sir, metadata elements, sir, overview of uh, ongoing initiatives and uh, recommendations for the next steps. So, thank you very much and uh, happy to answer any questions live. Uh,